<laughs> no, obviously what, what's happening overnight is they're rewriting history and, and making Kamala sound like a moderate when in fact she is far left, like far left. Worse than Bernie um, Sanders. She is considered yeah. more liberal by far than Bernie Sanders. She's a radical left lunatic. And if she's going to be our president very quickly, you're not going to have a country anymore. And she'll go back to all yeah. of the things that she believes in. She believes in defunding the police. She believes in no fracking, zero. Now all of yeah, a sudden she's yeah. saying, no, I, I will, I really want to see fracking. The day, the, if they got in, the day she got in, she'll end fracking. And by the way, if people didn't think that, the lunatics that, that really believe in that, they won't vote for her. What she has done to California is, you know better than I do, you just left California for a lot of those reasons. Now she's looking like she's, she wants to be more Trump than Trump, if that's possible. I don't think it's possible. She wants to have open borders, and now she's going like she's tough on the border. And we have no leadership. There's no respect for the United States of America with these people. And I'm telling you, yeah. she'll be worse than him because she's a believer yeah, no, in I, being radical right. left, I, and he wasn't. Can America find a balance between environmental sustainability and the current reliance on oil and gas? Elon Musk and Donald Trump dive into this critical discussion. In this engaging conversation, Elon Musk emphasizes the importance of not vilifying the oil and gas industry. He argues that if we were to abruptly stop using oil and gas, the economy would collapse and people would face severe hardships. Musk believes the U.S. should continue to provide oil and gas while gradually transitioning to sustainable energy. He envisions a future where solar energy and batteries play a significant role in energy generation. But this transition should be smooth and practical. I, I think you're right. It, it really, it's, it's important for the public that may be listening to this to say, to look at uh, Kamala's track record before the last like month and say, is that a track record you agree with? And I think if you're an independent moderate, you definitely would not agree with it because it is a, her behavior has been far left. And we're seeing just an overnight propaganda attempt to rewrite history and make it sound like Kamala's moderate when she in fact is not moderate. If we have her as a president, if we have a Democrat at this moment as a president, I don't think our country can survive. I, th I think it's I think it's a, a massive I think we're in massive trouble, frankly, with the Kamala administration, and that's my honest opinion. And and I, I think I think really it's essential that you win for the good of the country for this election. And that's understating my opinion. Now you know <laughs> you, 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 may, you may have seen this, but I, I got a letter from the EU Commission like saying to not have disinformation on the, the during this discussion that we're having. And there's there's a lot of attempts to do censorship and to force censorship even on Americans from other countries. They want the American dream back, more important than anything else. It's like, you don't have that today because the people, they've been just sucked. They see incompetent people running our, the Biden thing is very interesting. People just found him to be incompetent. And when I debated him, I was like, is this for real? It was. Yeah, it's just, it, it was just absurd. But I think there, there are like some grand projects that, that we, we could do. I think we could build a base on the moon. We could send American astronauts to Mars. We, we could build high speed connections yep. that are more advanced than anything else in the world between our cities. So people have fast transport, which is possible to solve traffic with tunnels. Um, right. We already made prog great progress in Vegas doing that. And and just do things that are exciting and inspiring to make the future feel like it's better than the past. Well, I saw and, what you like, did in I, Vegas, I, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. I got to see. I took a big glimpse at it, and it's incredible. It's incredible. And you could do that all over. You could do that all over. It's it's deep. Yeah. You don't even need much structure, assuming you're in the right area. No, it's, it's, it's straightforward. It's amazing. Um, and I think we could do some things that, like, like China's got incredible uh, high-speed rail between its cities, but I think it's actually possible with tunnels, if with the regulation, with an ability to actually, where it's, like, legal to actually do the tunnels, then you can have high-speed tunnels that are actually better than, than anything else in the world for high-speed transport between cities. And that would be something that Americans can say, wow, okay, we've got something that's cooler than anyone else in yeah. the world. That's the thing that makes you proud to be an and American. And much safer than surface trains, where there is a danger there with people, with crazy people. Yeah. It's much safer, much better. And it's sad because I've seen some of the greatest trains. I find it fascinating. And I've seen the systems and how they work and the bullet trains, they call them. And they, yeah. they go unbelievably fast, unbelievably comfortable with no problems. And we don't have anything like that in this country, not even close. And it yeah. doesn't make sense that we... Does it make sense? Yeah, and I, I think also there's hopping on the excess regulation, but I think something that... Like, I think people can generally understand is that what happens with laws and regulations is that they just there's more and more of them every year and less process to clean them up. Eventually, everything becomes right. illegal. New York City is yeah, losing. Absolutely. New York City and state lose a lot of business 
over what they did to me because these people say, we don't want that to happen to us. That's no justice system. You have an unfair system yes. of justice and it's costing New York State a tremendous amount of money. People are leaving and companies are leaving and they won't come back. All of that stuff is important, but the economy now is the big thing and we can turn that economy up so fast and people are going to be back again. We're going to get rid of inflation. Yeah, I think there's a lot, a lot of opportunity. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just want—I I want to congratulate uh, you. You've done an amazing job. You are—you have definitely got a fertile mind. We can talk. You and I can talk about rockets, we'll tunnels. We can talk about <laughs> tunnels and rockets and electric cars. So many things. And now you're into the AI, and that's going to be another beauty. I'll say. So it's—it's it's an amazing—it's an amazing thing you've done, Elon. It's an amazing thing, and I well, congratulate you. Thank you. And I just uh, say here's to an exciting, inspiring future that people can look forward to and be optimistic and excited about what happens next. And that's uh, the kind of future that I think uh, you'll bring as president, and that's why I endorse you. I appreciate that. That endorsement meant a lot to me. Not all endorsements mean that much, to be honest. Your endorsement meant a lot. And we have a, a phrase, make America great again. It's pretty simple, but it really says that we want to make America great again. And we can do it. We can do it now. But if we were going to suffer another four years like we've suffered for the last four years, I'm not sure the country can ever come back. That's how it is. It's so bad. We have to I do think, a lot I of I think things. that's a very real risk. Yeah, it's a big risk. It's a very real risk. Yeah. And, and I'd just like to, to note to people listening, like, I've not been very political before. And, and if, just, if you look at my track, my record, it's, I've actually been, I'm not like, since I try to paint me as a far right guy, which is absurd because I'm like making electric vehicles and solar and, and batteries helping them with the environment. And, and I actually, I, I supported Obama. I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand when he was running for president. And so it's not like I'm like some sort of died in the wool long term Republican. I'm actually, I call myself historically a moderate Democrat, and, and, but now I feel like we're really at, at a critical juncture for the country. And I think a lot of people thought the Biden administration would be a moderate administration, but it's not. And obviously, we were just going to send an, an, an even further left administration with Kamala Les Miles opinion. Her dad is literally, she was brought up as a, as a natural, her dad is a Marxist economist. That's, you can Google it. It's not a, we're not making this up. That's how she was brought up. And we, we just, we, we want to have a future that is prosperous. And I think we're just at this critical juncture. And, and it, I think this is a case of the, America is going to add a fork in the road. And it's true. And I think it will take, if the path, to, like you are the path to prosperity, and I think Kamala is the opposite. Then that's my, that's my opinion. I'm going to get attacked like crazy. And I've also experienced quite a bit of lawfare myself. And, but I'm just trying to tell people my honest opinion. And I haven't been active in, really active in politics before. And I'm just trying to point out that my track record historically has been moderate, if not slightly left. Most people in America, would, would agree with, which is that we want safe and clean cities, we want secure borders, we want sensible government spending, we want to res, uh, restore res, both the perception and reality of respect in the in judicial system, to stop the lawfare, and and, and I think that's like how are, the, how are those even right wing positions? I think those are just that's just common sense, and that's would you agree with 100%. that? Hundred percent. I, I don't understand the whole. They call it progressive. They don't like the word liberal anymore, but call it liberal or progressive. I don't understand how somebody could say that it's okay for them to empty prisons into our country. And again, I told you their crime yes, rates all over the world are going way down, which makes sense. In fact, the next time what we'll do is if something happens with this election, which would be a horror show, we'll meet the next time in Venezuela because it'll be a far safer place to meet than our country, okay? So we'll go, you and I will go and we'll have a meeting and dinner in Venezuela because that's what's happening. Their crime rate's coming down and our crime rate's going through the roof. And it's so simple. And it's, you haven't seen anything yet because these people have come into our country and they're just getting acclimated. And they don't know about being politically correct law enforcement or lack of law enforcement. And our police, I, I have to just end with this. We have great police. We have great law enforcement, but they're not allowed to do their job. They have to be able to do their job yeah. without being destroyed. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content.